April 3rd, 1952, at Orgonon, Rangeley, Maine. I, Wilhelm Reich, am sitting alone in the large room in the lower house. All people are gone. In the morning and the whole day yesterday, a meeting took place of the members of the board of the board of trustees of the foundation which carries my name. <clears throat> Everybody's gone now, and I would like to add a few words to the recording we made yesterday and today of the disaster which struck Orbanon. <clears throat> There's nobody here to listen to what I'm saying. The recording apparatus is the only witness. I hope that someone will at some time in the future listen to this recording with great respect. Respect for the courage that was necessary to sustain the research work in organ energy and life energy all through these years. I shall not go into the great strain, into the details, into the worries, the sleepless nights, the tears, expenditures and money and effort, the patience which I had to have with all my workers and with all my students. <clears throat> I would like only to mention the fact that there's nobody around, there's not a single soul either here at Oregon or down in New York who would fully and really from the bottom of his existence understand what I'm doing and be with me in what I'm doing. They are all very good people. They are decent, honest, hardworking. I trust them. We are very good friends, all of them, or most of them. But this does not alter the fact that they all, without any exception, are against, I say, are against what I am doing. Every single one of them spites me, interferes with my effort, crosses it out, blots out, flattens out, does one thing or another thing, whatever it may be, to diminish <coughs> my effort, no, to diminish the effects of my effort, to blot out the sharpness and acuity of my thoughts, to reduce to rubble and nothing, or nothingness, what I have elaborated in about now 30, uh, four, uh, 33 or 34 years of systematic thinking, and in about 40, 40 years of human suffering, since about 1912, or rather 1910 when my mother died. There is not a single soul around who would fully understand or would not say no to it all. This no is identical with I don't want it, I don't like it, I loathe it. Why is it here? Why does he have to exist? Why does he, why does not, doesn't he sit down and take it easy? 
Why did he have to uh, start this Oranur experiment which gives us so much trouble? They see only the trouble. They don't see or they don't want to realize what it means for medicine, biology, and science in general, as well as philosophy, to have this aura nerve going. To them, it is mostly a bother, an inducer of sickness, suffering, and at times, I have the distinct feeling that they believe, or they do not dare quite to admit their own thoughts, that I may have gone haywire. This reaction of my closest friends and co-workers to the situation here is exactly the same that has harassed the human race for as much as we can say 8,000 or 10,000 years since patriarchy has ruled its destinies and since the natural love was extinguished in the newborn infants. I shall not go into that. It's all written up in my publications. Whoever knows these publications also knows what that means. The discovery of the life energy would have been accomplished long ago had this I don't want it, I fear it, I loathe it, I'll kill it, I'll flatten it out, I won't let it uh, live or exist. If that had not been in their structures, not in their desires, not in their positive, conscious wishes, they're all decent and, and, and good people. No, it is in the structure. It is somehow in their tissues, in their blood. They cannot tolerate anything that has to do with organ energy or life energy or what they call God or what is their deepest longing for love for fulfillment. They cannot tolerate it and they fear it. They fear it by way of structure, their tissues, their blood cannot stretch out, cannot take it, evades it, avoids it, and lotus it. I do not say all this to uh, depreciate their efforts, their honor, their loves, their lives. <clears throat> I say it because it is true, because it turns up in every single move, in every single word, in every single opinion, in every single paper, in every single thing they did to, to whatever ever had to do with discovery, with the discovery of genitality, life, love, uh, such people as Lawrence, or such philosophies as Giordano Brunus, or such great lives as Jesus Christ, and so forth, and so forth. It is a sad, lonely chapter of the human race. I don't feel that I am ob obligated to solve this riddle or to do anything about it. I happen to discover the life energy. I happen to induce the Oranur experiment. I know what it means for the future development of medicine and biology philosophy and natural science. I'm fully aware of it. And in, these, in this awareness, I am completely alone. There's no soul anywhere far and wide to talk to, to give, uh, to give one's, one's feelings, to let one's feelings go freely, to speak like as friends speak to each other. This is all.